gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Palmer, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make a point that uh, apparently my colleagues across the aisle don't get. China's objective is not to save the planet from climate change. China's objective is to rule the planet as the sole superpower. And anyone who does not understand that, I think, uh, contributes to the national security risk that we're facing with China. Mr. Mills, uh, is clean energy clean? By the definition of what we used to think it broadly in environmental domains, no, the answer is no. It's no cleaner than, at best, any other form of energy. It's, it potentially will be an environmental disaster because of the mining requirements, refining requirements. By the way, which we don't do here, we re become 100% reliant on China for all of that. There's, there's not a single uh, smelter for rare earth elements in, in the Western Hemisphere that I know about. I think they're all in China except maybe one. 90% of the rare earth refining is in China. If you mine rare earths in America, you send them currently, and some are mined here, to China. You know, it's worth uh, pointing out for the record that the uh, environmental impacts of energy are, of course, universal, right? We mm -hmm. can't avoid that. These are machine issues. But China uh, has a dominance that was, as we, we know, planned for two decades publicly, but they don't dominate what the world uses for energy. In fact, the 84 percent of all energy is hydrocarbon based. And the world spent five to ten trillion dollars in the last two decades avoiding hydrocarbons, and we still only get three percent of all of our energy globally from wind and solar. I, I, I want to ask you another quick question, I, and I, I'm not sure you know the answer to this, but approximately it takes an enormous amount of cement and steel and plastic to build a wind turbine, it takes an enormous amount to build solar panels. Um, are you aware that? 50% of, of the world's steel production is from China, over 60% of the cement, over 30% of the plastics. And we've just been talking about rare earth elements. We're not even talking about the stuff that we don't do here, and you can't produce any of that without natural gas. You would need to use natural gas, coal, and oil to produce all those materials. And so would you, would you yes, agree that th this mad dash to eliminate all hydrocarbons, particularly natural gas, first of all, is from a physics and engineering perspective impossible, but just from a rational sense, insane? Well, it's, it's actually physically impossible to do at the scales and the time frames that are being imagined, and we have that from the IEA itself, which is pointing yeah. out that there's no path to eliminating use of oil, gas, and coal in minerals production and processing known for the decades. Well, they also point out that there's, under no scenario, we'll be at net zero by 2050. That's correct, sir. And, and, and Bill Gates testified in a public here, uh, speech that even if we did achieve net zero, it wouldn't change the climate modeling scenarios by a tiny fraction of a percent. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, the other issues with renewables. And I'm not against renewables. I just understand that we're not going to have a sustainable economy with the growth that we need for a country uh, and the ability to per help other economies, emerging economies, grow with 100% renewables, it's not possible. But also point out that we need to be focused on next-gen nuclear because as we had a very good hearing last week, and I, I, I think we made some really good points. But one of the problems with, uh, with uh, renewables, particularly uh, in this case turbines, is their life cycle is only about 25 years. Right. And you can't recycle the blades. And we've got some uh, photos here of of landfills uh, in Wyoming and Texas where we're having to bury these things because we can't recycle them. Uh, would you consider that an environmental problem? Well, yeah, I think that massive waste production that you can't recycle is by definition an mm -hmm. environmental problem. In theory, you could eventually recycle them, but that theory uh, is still in the experimental stage. So right now, they're just trash. And enormously expensive. And we, and we have a debt crisis that is a, a, an existential threat to our national security, as well as the emergence of China as a superpower. Um, I also want to address this, this other issue of, of, of uh, pollution over people and just remind my colleagues that my kids and hopefully my future grandkids breathe the same air that everybody else does. We drink the same water. We, we live on the same ground. And it's, it is so disingenuous to use that kind of phraseology to further divide people, and, and, and I hopefully people have enough common sense to realize that we all live on the same uh, uh, area. We're breathing the same air, drinking the same water, and this idea that it, it come, somehow contributes uh, or, or causes asthma, 
I, I just remind you that even the CDC says they, we don't know what causes asthma, and there are other things most most likely related to the economic conditions of individuals who are suffering from asthma, particularly kids, because uh, of uh, low household income, poor housing, things like that, that we can solve with a vibrant economy if we can get our debt crisis, our capital crisis that has now been created because of the debt under control. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields.